Howdy, this is John Breen. Today we're gonna to be doing a controls upgrade. Let's get to it. Okay, so we're here in the plant now, and I'm in front of the open panel that we're going to be upgrading. And this machine isn't a very complicated machine. There aren't any servos or big complicated pieces. So we're just gonna be swapping out today the PLC and the IO that comes with it. This is a depalletizer machine. So we've got pallets come in on this side. Somebody brings it with a forklift. And the machine, one level at a time, will use a magnet lift to pick up all these big cans, and put them on the conveyor. And then they'll come around, they go through uh, a quick test to make sure that the can is good, to make sure it's not bubbling out on the top like a bad can would. And then they get turned and rolled through some adhesive and a label. So really, uh, it's a mostly gravity-fed system there. So I've got the new parts here now. The old PLC and IO are an Allen Bradley Slick 150 brand, SLC 150. And these are probably about 30 years old. So it's about time when we can't replace them anymore, we can't even get them on eBay, it's time to upgrade. In this situation, many companies will try to replace the whole panel, replace the machine. It is an old machine, but it's really not necessary often. And so what we do is selective replacement. We've got things like contactors and motor starters and fuses, and those are all really easy for most maintenance teams to upgrade. But when it comes to PLCs, they're not good at that. So that's what we do. We come in and just replace the components that they can't replace themselves anymore. So this is the new PLC that we're going to use. This is actually a pretty cost sensitive model. It is Allen Bradley, so it's name brand. It's good quality. It's going to last for a long time. And it comes with a little power supply to make sure that uh, it interfaces with the 120 volts in here. Because older machines didn't use 24 volts like we do nowadays. You'll see that it's actually a lot smaller as well. So instead of having the two big pieces like this, we'll just have the one and it'll fit there. I have taken pictures, close-up pictures of all the terminals and wires for later reference, just in case I miss something now. And I'm looking at it, it's especially important when we're looking at the outputs. There are banks of outputs here, each with its own power bias. And so we'll, we'll follow these wires back and figure out where the power bias comes from. Power bias in this case gives the outputs the power to be able to turn on at all. And sometimes that's used for safety purposes. I don't know that it's probably not used on this machine for safety purposes and we'll keep looking, but I just want to point out my strategy as I'm taking things apart here. I'm looking for example, the VAC pin on here, that's the power bias, looks like wire number 40, and that's going to supply all of these outputs here. So I just put a zip tie on here to mark that they went together because the output bank size and the power biasing will just be wired a little bit different on the new PLC. I'm also just double checking to make sure all the wire numbers are actually on there and make sense again before I disconnect it and lose the reference. And I want to point out that we learned something here that's not even marked in the prints with, with pencil. Outputs 111 and 115 are fired by the same output right now. And I see that 115 is not wired at all. Maybe that output just went bad at some point and somebody said, well, hey, these should turn on at the same time all the time. Why don't we just wire them together? And then we don't need to worry that 115 is bad. Okay, so we've got the old modules out. We've got all the wires disconnected. Kind of looks like spaghetti right now. 
and we're looking at how to mount this. We're going to put it on DIN rail. So I've got a piece of DIN rail here that I just cut to the size of the space that we have. And then in carpentry, level is the most important thing. In a panel, the thing that people are going to notice isn't so much level, but is it parallel with this and this? So I just measured the space. It's about nine inches and I measured four and a half inches up from the lower one and drew a line. And then I put this in position and just drew a couple circles or ovals, I should say, where the holes are going to be. So we're just going to drill and tap, put a couple screws in and we'll be uh, visually appealing. So we got this mounted in here, and now I'm starting to look at what we're going to wire. And if I take some of this I.O. out of the way, you can see we've got power wires. And they have these wired together, two per terminal. But I'm looking at our new terminals here, and they're just not big enough to handle it. So if this were a new panel, what I would be doing is putting in terminal blocks. Maybe even right next to the PLC. But because this is an existing panel, and it's tight, we don't have a whole lot of space. This won't shift over more than a quarter inch before it starts hitting bolts and stuff on the other side here. We're going to use what's called a lever nut. These are made by Wago. They're UL listed. It's not really, like I say, it's not my preferred solution. I would rather have a terminal block, but I think it's the cleanest choice in this case. So we'll put, in this case, the two hot wires, the two line wires. I'll run two of those into the lever nut, and then I'll have one more wire that comes out and feeds this. And then the lever nut will sit inside of the wire nut. So it'll be good and clean. It'll look nice, and uh, it's still right by where it's being used, so if a maintenance guy is ever wondering where does that go, he can quickly find that. I would never just hide this somewhere else and expect somebody to be able to find it. That's not really a nice thing to do to your maintenance guy.
All right, so we wrapped up a little early yesterday, getting the panel installed. You see we've got the entire, uh, all, all the I.O. is wired, it's ready to go. We just took our lock off of the main breaker, so we're gonna power this on now. And I know it's open right now. There's no other way to program this PLC because there, there's no programming port on the side of the box, so we have to do it live. Panel. So I'm not super concerned, but uh, don't do this at home, kids. Not nearly as dramatic as it could have been. I see a green light here. Looks like we're ready to program. I'm happy to say the operation was a success. PLC upgrades don't have to be scary. With a little preparation, we were able to remove the original PLC, install a new one, load the program, and debug in less than two days. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And to learn more about us, check out our website. See you next time.